Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John here with Jeremy. We are going to be testing the biggest requested thing that we have here, which is picks. Picks, everybody wants to know about them, and we're gonna give you a blind test to tell you boutique picks, which one is the one for you? Is it Tone Slab or is it Blue Chip? We'll find out. All right, we are back, and Jer, it is pick Today time. we are gonna do another blind challenge. Those have been real popular because the audience gets a chance to just listen and see what they can hear the difference in. And for anybody new to the channel, we are a music shop in Springfield, Missouri that sells instruments and loves acoustic instruments. So we do a YouTube channel where we just talk about the things that we carry. And one of the most uh, probably underlooked things, but a lot of people are surprised even to know that there are picks on the market that start at $45 and go up and they'd be surprised at it and wonder, is it worth it? And we have a newcomer to the, uh, the pick arena. We've got the blue chip pick. He's been out about 15 years, I'd say. Uh, very well known. We sell a lot of these. And then a newcomer, the Tone Slab. Mm -hmm. And we're going to discuss a little bit about both the companies. What makes them special? Is it worth it? Can you tell a difference? Which one should you own? We're going to try to, to break all that down here. And I guess we should probably start out with the one that's been around the longest. Well, I think we should even go further back. Both me and you and a lot of professional uh, players for a lot of years have been using tortoiseshell. Tortoiseshell is, was around in the 20s, teens, uh, turn of the century. Jewelry, Probably used it for everything. Then, like, yeah. like 1800, I'm sure they were using tortoiseshell. Oh, I would... Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it at all. Um, and, and a lot of the players started to get used to its tonal properties. There was a certain characteristic to it. It had highs, more highs, had more lows, had a volume. And less picky sound. A, That's the it thing. was a creation It didn't of, have that plastic sound when it hits the, the strings. You don't hear the pick. Just got, it really uh, translated straight to the strings, and you heard the instrument more than the plictrum, uh, as the old timers used to call them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, tortoiseshell pick. Now, tortoiseshell became outlawed in the early 60s or 70s. Uh, as part of the uh, the Endangered Species Act, and for good reason, they yeah, didn't want absolutely. to be hunting down tortoises just to make guitar picks. Or and by the way, let's get it. It's they're actually see turtles. They call turtles. it tortoise shell. It's yeah. not actually a tortoise. It's a turtle. But. Thanks for correcting that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we would have got that, that in the comments. They would have showed up in the comments whether I did it or not. So. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of them on the market, and anything that was purchased, a lot of people would find old jewelry boxes, mirrors, uh, hairbrushes that, that were made out of tortoise because that was very, or turtle shell. That was very popular uh, for all kinds of different applications in your home. And then they would cut those down into pick size shapes and then turn guitar picks out of them. Mm -hmm. Great tone. They, they sound good. They play good. The biggest drawback to them, all, besides the price, uh, scale, price, scarceability, yep, not is available. they also wear out pretty quickly. I, I know needed maintenance. maintenance. Just maintenance. I used more to have to anything. carry one of those fingernail files that has the, uh, the the sandpaper on it, different sand grades. Then you'd have to buff it to get rid of all the scratchy sound. And you'd have to do that probably once every two weeks or so to get it back into clearing. And they'd also chip a lot. So uh, that was probably the bigger issue for me as a player was the chipping and uh, snap, you know, and that kind of material. For me, because they were so scarce, I would start out with a pretty good size pick and then I didn't want to get rid of it. So I'd keep reshaping it, reshaping yeah. it. And pretty soon I'm playing with like this little bitty nub a dime shape uh, guitar pick. So you're kind of changing your style of playing each time that the pick shrinks on you, and then you start back over with a big one and relearn to play with a big pick again. So it had its drawbacks, very popular. Uh, other people try. I think uh, the brown bear, what is it called? The, there was uh, the casing pick. Yes, there was red bear. Red bear. And uh, there was a billion of them. And every single one of them came to me with a friend that said, dude, I'm replacing all my tortoise shell. This is the only one for me. And every single time Wigan came out, every one time, I was like, yeah, it's a good pick. Not it quite. is not there. And I, I just could not give on it. Then came this company. Uh, Matt Goins came up with blue chip picks. And I was like, this is it. This is as close as it gets. It still had quite a few things that were missing in the, you know, the intricacies of the tone. But so close. it was very close, close enough that I couldn't tell had I not been A, being them back and forth. And I would be able to go, that works for me. And here was the best part. Zero maintenance. Absolutely no maintenance issues. I never had to buff it. I never had to reshape it for chips. And it just became uh, the right one. So both me and you were using these for a long time. Yeah, they're they're you hand use... varnished. They, they kind of get that front angle so that the attack on your strings um, is much more of a flat angle and you get less of scratchy, yeah. uh, the scratch of the edge of the pick to them. So that they, they sounded and played really well, too. They, mm -hmm. they felt good in your hand. So I was very impressed with it. 
And I didn't realize one of the biggest features of it was just longevity. Like I would play this thing and play it and play it and play it, and I couldn't see any wear on the pick. And like I said, not to say that it's not, they don't wear at some point. Well, there's our, there are players that do but wear these down. And I've had this one probably five forever. years at least, and it's, it's still new. close to new for me. Yeah. And I play a lot of hours on these. So they can last me forever just about unless you lose one. That's the only time you're... So if you've spread out that extra cost over that period of time, it's definitely a worthwhile investment for me. That's one of the points that we would get to in this video is the, the amount of play you're going to get out of this, you would have bought 100 other little uh, uh, Durlin oh, yeah. picks. When I was playing the uh, plastic Durlin picks, I mean, I could get an evening out of it, and then it would be wore down to a shape that I didn't want to use anymore. And very scratchy it sounding. Just, it was not there at all. Um, so you're using the CT55... Named after Jeremy Chapman. I mean, no, Chris Thiele. Uh, Jeremy. Yeah, this is one that Chris had requested this size and thickness and bevel. So it's it's the Chris Thiele or the CT55. Which has three sharp points. Um, I went to Matt and said, you know what? I like, uh, he had one called a Tad 50 and he had one called a Tad 60. And there are things I liked about both of them. I have to have three rounded. So this one is three rounded. Um, but he was able to get me, and they don't actually have this, but the Acoustic Shop does, in case you were wondering. Um, the, uh, it will be a, a TAD 55 3R. So three rounded edges, 55 thickness. depth, same de thickness as that. Um, in that and, and that was like, yeah, that's the one I can use. And I used it for a long, long time. Sounds great. Like you said, very little amount of wear. Um, I, you know, there is a... A rounded tone to these picks that is there. It does have extended highs, it does have extended lows, and more volume than when I, let's like, you know, I got over here one of our, uh, just a basic a Durlin, Durlin purple pick. Uh, this one has our name on it. Um, I use the rounded edge when I try to play with it. So when you do that, you do the same thing with this. Definition you hear less of the pick. For me, one of the biggest things that stands out is you just hear the the notes come out. You don't hear the tick, 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 of the of the plastic uh, near as much. It's not emphasized like a plastic Berlin pick is, and some of the other competition out there. It's a, it's not even like a tick tick like a high. It's like a I don't know how to. It is plastic. It, it literally sounds. This to me sounds like. <laughs> I hear the scratchy. note, I hear that pick strike without the actual note that goes immediately with it. And with this, that Sounds note like is there. And that's also, what I hear. also the feel of it. I mean, I just, uh, that's one of the things people say, well, does it make a difference for the amateur player? I've got students that have, they, they notice that we all play them, so like, all right, I'm going to take the leap and buy me, myself a $45 pick. And every one of them By comes the way, to me. These are $40, $40 here at the acoustic shop. Just okay. to clarify. Everyone, everyone comes to me and says, wow, it was, I can hear the difference, and I didn't realize how big a difference it was until I played it for a few hours and then went to my other pick. And they can actually feel and hear a difference in their playing uh, with the pick. So, yes, the amateur beginner player will hear and feel that difference as much as a pro professional player. They are not a pro-only uh, option, I don't think. That was that. Then, recent, uh, my buddy Frank Sullivan gives a hold of me one day and goes, oh, we got a new boutique pick out here and I want you to give it a try. And I said, I'm down. Um, so then he comes out with one called the Tone Slab. And I said, well, here's what I use, which I told him was that pick right there. And I told him what you use. And he built us ones. Now, these were in our specific color. Uh, so from the, that was the prototype, prototype yep, one. that was sent to you. Um, now we have these in this uh, specifically acoustic shop color. It is this turquoise blue. It is beautiful. Um, looks really good. So there, there um, is one point right there is point for attractiveness. Yeah. They have a very cool color to them. And they also sell different colors, but the acoustic shop uh, does have exclusive specific. color mm -hmm. is that light blue there. Now this is a 1.3 which does not exactly measure out as the uh, 55. 55. In fact, we took a caliber to these and I'm not even sure that it's truly a 1.3. Uh, it might be. I don't know. But I know the cal I don't know the math. That's what I'm basically telling you. The measurements, when I put a caliper on this, not quite exactly a uh, the exact same measurement. This one measured on a caliper at 0 0.053 where uh, those are at 0 0.055. 
Um, and they do measure in inches versus millimeters, and everybody's got their thing. Um, but this was, I asked him, I said, what would be the closest equivalent to that? This is what he came out with. So that's what we have is the 1.3s uh, in the tri points. Uh, you have the full points, mine are rounded. Um, to me, this one started to take back the things that I was missing from the tortoiseshell pick. This gave me some of that brighter definition. I'll give you a real quick, we're going to do this, more of the clarity. You know, this one just has this extra. So, so it's got a little bit more lows. It's got a little bit more rich tone and the brightness. Uh, it, it just, to me, had more of everything that I liked out of the Torch Shell thing. It's got a little bit more brightness. So the Torch Shell seems a little bit duddier, maybe warmer to me, but if I want the notes to really sound clean and like, like I'm a cleaner player than I am. I also, I hear even a little bit more low end. Maybe just a little bit more on the both, both ends. Yeah, I, I, so I think there's definitely a, a new one. Now, I'm going to tell you that this does come at a price. And we have found this in using this is these do wear more and quite a bit faster than the uh, blue chips do. Again, closer to the tortoiseshell itself where it, it's something you're going to have to stay on top it of. It is and... not the same as the tortoiseshell. I will argue this, that with the tortoiseshell, I was chipping them so much that I had to reshape it a lot. And I've been playing this pick... I don't know, six months now or so, um, if not a little bit longer. I buff it, and that's basically a, to get the fine scratches out of the bevel, and that's what I see on it. I haven't seen any actual wear wear, but I do see scratches and things that kind of get built into them. Where and you start um, to hear them a little bit. And, and I fun. start to hear them, and it's a little, it's just a little bit fussiness. So this comes down to that, you know, what is it that's primary for you? I found for me lately that I just love this tone. And I really do. I, I love the blue chips. I think I'm still going to stay in my arsenal, but I really do like it, this. It's worth the effort to keep that polished up. And For me, I absolutely do. And I think, you know, tone-wise, you're not going to be disappointed in that at all. It, it's probably worth that type of effort, especially for the hobbyist that that's part of your experience is keeping your pick. It's like owning a good set of golf clubs and you want to keep them clean and, and oiled and, you know, make sure they're, they're staying new and fresh and wash off all this, the sod off of them. Um, Good for you. Some Mine players want to really take care of them like that. <laughs> Other ones just want to go out there and bang them around the golf course and not really worry too much about them. And that, that brings up another comparison. Like, is it worth spending $45 to $40 to $45 on a pick? If you're a golfer, you buy a sleeve of high-quality balls that cost you $24. You get maybe one or two games out of them, and then you abuse them so much you had to go buy another sleeve. <laughs> there you go. Plus the golf fees and all that. Uh, the These, you, you know, as part of that investment of your hobby, you're playing music, $45, yes, that's an expense. If you're keeping them for five years, it's a pretty small expense. Um, the trade-off for the amount of tone you get and the, the smoothness of your playing, I'm going to say, you know, for me, I think it, both of these picks would be worth the price. I, I think that's one thing that we have not talked about very much so far on both of these picks is the feel. And I know that's going to be the hardest thing to get across on this video is the feel of these picks. There is a... I don't, I can't describe it even, you know, like I said, when I play with this, uh, with the Durlin pick, it, it's like it's fighting me. It's like Getting I'm fighting up. with it. I'm just, I'm doing, you know, and it just doesn't seem doesn't to work. Glide. When I play with this, it's like, it's an extension of my hand. That's what I would say the big difference is. Again, it just has more control. It feels more natural. It it flows better. So that's another good reason to have it. So I think we talked about it more than enough here, Jeremy. I think uh, we both agree that a boutique pick is a great thing to have. Let's see if you guys agree. We're going to do a little blind test and compare. Tell us which one you think is the right one for you.
Well, first of all, tell us which one you choose, Jared. Okay, that, that was good. I, uh, I'm i still going to stick with the blue chip, I think. I, I love the tone of the tone slab, and I will keep it in my pocket, and I'll be playing it quite often. I do like the non-maintenance of the blue chip because it's always the same for me. It stays the same. So you're saying you're lazy? I'm and... lazy, and I like consistency. <laughs> but I think the, the trade-off, this might be my studio pick. If I'm in a studio and I really want the best tone that I can possibly get, or if I'm on stage and really worried about how good I'm sounding uh, and sounding cleaner, this definitely helped me get more clarity to my playing. It makes the note separation sound uh, more. It makes the notes, uh, it makes it sound like I'm playing the notes cleaner with my left hand, even though it's all being accomplished with the right. So I will give it points for that. I still think I just like the blue chip maybe because I've been with it for 15 years, 10 years, and I'm just kind of stuck on it. So I'm going with the blue chip for now. I am going to completely argue for exactly the same reasons that you did. Uh, almost everything you said is exactly what I like about this, except for the maintenance. There's only that's the only downside. I am uh, I have been moved for this. I will keep the blue chip in my. Uh, I do. I keep it in the, my phone in my bikini, and uh, I keep it around for when I need something. Uh, but like you said. Overall, for me, this gave me more definition. My notes sound cleaner and more accurate, um, and I feel like I'm not working as hard to do so. Not that I had to work extremely harder for the blue chip. It's just, to me, it was there. Yes, I'm buffing it, but I do that every three to four weeks, and I just kind of go over it and uh, you know keep it clean and keep it what I want. But to me, it was well worth it. Um, I used to say the same thing for me. Tortoise shell in the studio, save my blue chip for everything else. I think now I'm like still going to save my tortoise shell for when I really, really, really want something. 90% there with this, and then 85% there when I use the blue chip. So. And I guess maybe I'm being a little lazy. I mean, if I was a finger-style guitarist, imagine how much time they have to spend manicuring <laughs> those fingernails and growing them out and put a little fingernail polish on them. So I'm sure a little bit of maintenance is definitely worth it. I'd just like to be able to pull my pick out of my pocket, be ready to play, and, and go... Um, I would either too. one. I, I just would be, if I ever more. lose a blue chip pick, I'm going to be more than happy to be picking up my, my tone slab and, like I said, be using it for special occasions. So both of them are great options. I, I recommend trying them both out, and probably you'll end up keeping both, I imagine. Um, so what did you guys think? What is your favorite? And do you think it's worth it? Can you tell the difference between the least expensive pick and the most? Which brings us to our Speaking next video. Speaking of that. We did a blind pick challenge. If we are not playing the instrument, if we're not holding the pick, can we tell the difference just by listening? We made a video where we compared all the top picks and some very not top picks. And see what you guys think. If you could pick out the favorite one there, it's going to be right here. Click on that. It was a lot of fun to make that video. And uh, I think you're going to be surprised. Yep. 